I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my guide digging into all the things that you need to know before becoming and as you become an expat. We're putting together a complete guide that's going to step you through all of this completely for free. And today we're going to be talking about the needs for having a lawyer in the country that you're moving to. Okay, so. If you're coming from a place, assuming you're living in the country that you were born in, there's a decent chance that you do not currently have a lawyer or attorney in the country that you're coming from. This is relatively common. A lot of people don't have them. Generally, we would recommend that as an adult, you want to have a lawyer wherever you are. You just never know when something is going to go wrong, and it is an important part of protecting yourself. But, of course, if you're living in the place where you grew up, there's a good chance that you have friends and family that they have resources, they know people, and obtain Obtaining a lawyer when you need would actually be pretty quick and simple. If I was living back home uh, in New York where I grew up and I had no contacts with lawyers or anything of the sort, I could easily call any number of friends in a pinch and say, look, something terrible is happening to me. I need a lawyer right away. Please get me one. And most of them would have their own lawyer and those that don't would easily be able to reach out to friends and family themselves and find a lawyer that is trusted by someone in their network. Someone would have used one for business or some other purpose. This is normal and it makes life very easy when it's the place that you're from. You're going to have these resources. Also, when it's the place that you're from, the chances that you're going to need a lawyer all that often is much lower. Just because you are familiar with how everything works, uh, you have uh, a lifetime of access and inherent knowledge of different things. And we've talked about this in some other videos, but not in the skills series. So I want to make sure we touch on a couple of these topics. Of course, if you want to dig into this more, I have other videos, of course, always free here on the channel that you can go into talking about um, an analysis of risks that people have seen, examples, what happens when you're isolated as an expat, how you can find a good lawyer, depending on where it is that you're looking to go and so forth. But as a expat skill in our guide. We want to make sure that you are aware that it doesn't matter where you are moving. It doesn't matter what you plan to do. If you are going past being a tourist, your plan is to become a long-term fixture of a given location. And I would advise this in most cases, even for digital nomads, there's a little bit of gray area exactly when you need to make the transition from acting purely like a tourist and taking your chances, as we might say, to being in a place long enough that you would take the effort, take the time to go out and locate and, and create a relationship with an attorney. Now, this could take many forms. We're not saying that you need to use an attorney all the time. In many cases, you would basically use them never. But this is taking the time to identify uh, an attorney who's going to work for you, setting up a relationship, whether that means they have a retainer or you just have made contact and you know how to reach out to them. Uh, lawyers will generally be very happy to do this because while you may not represent a new client in the moment, if they have a number of people do this over time, they know that that means there's going to be more business for them in the future. So this is not a negative for them. And you're not asking them to do any work. You're just trying to establish a relationship, get them on your, on your speed dial. So if something ever happens, whether you are in a medical emergency or you have a legal problem or you, you're in trouble for any reason, or you're trying to get some paperwork done and you don't know where to turn, or you have questions, you have a person that you can reach out to. And everybody will work differently. Every country is different. So this is a very broad thing. But you want them as soon as you're moving to a new country. And one of the key reasons beyond emergencies, and of course, you want them for emergencies. And what kind of emergency? The sky's the limit. Anything that happens that you're unsure about, whether it's you're looking at renting a place or buying a place or buying a vehicle, or you wonder what you're allowed to do, or you want to know how long you can stay before you have to get residency or how you do just whatever. Any question you have about the country you're in, of course, you can do word of mouth. Of course, you can talk to other expats, but those things are not necessarily great resources. Sometimes they're no more knowledgeable than you. Sometimes they know even less. Sometimes their information is wrong. How do they know? They're probably, in most cases, the farthest from an authority that you're likely to actually run into because they're expats. Why would they be an authority? They are new just like you. There's all kinds of people who've lived there for a long time and they don't typically have a lot of those answers. They need attorneys too, not as often as you do, but they need them too. So you're going to need an attorney to give you that information in many cases directly. It's going to vary by country. Some places you're going to never need a lawyer. It's just, you're going to be like, I'm so glad I have one. They didn't cost me anything or they cost me 20 bucks and now I have their number. They know who I am. I'm in their system. They can, they have my credit card. Should anything go wrong? I can just have a friend call. That will give you a peace of mind. 
And if that's all it ever is, fantastic. But for places like Nicaragua,、uh, many just normal everyday activities in life are expected to be done by a lawyer, and in some cases, it is required by law that lawyers do a lot of normal things. And even when they're not required, that's A lot handier to work with one, and you often need a notary and special filing that are, can be very difficult for you to do if you don't have an attorney. Again, this varies dramatically from country to country, but the concept is a general one. You always want access to an attorney at the drop of a hat, and one you can trust because when an emergency happens, that is the absolute last time that you want to be trying to find an attorney or set up a relationship or make a deal so that you can pay for them. Those are if you're in a medical emergency, you're in a legal emergency, and you're being arrested,、uh, or or something of that sort. You need someone right away. Now, if it's suddenly I have an opportunity to buy a house or a car, and I want a lawyer to look over the paperwork, you've got some time. It's not an emergency, but you'll still appreciate having someone that you can just turn to. But for emergencies, that's when it really matters, and you can't establish that relationship at that time. That is a great way to be taken advantage of. Any lawyer, anybody that you're going to talk to in that situation is going to know that you don't have the resources to protect yourself, and you don't have the time and the the luxury of Time to be able to do your due diligence, and so why would they give you a good price? Why would they do a good job? Why would they give you a good recommendation when there's an opportunity for you to be taken advantage of, and the amount of money that would be left on the table would be significant? They would have to really give up a lot to treat you well in that circumstance, and so while some would, a very large number would not. But it goes deeper than that. I know, as an expat, and I talk to lots of expats. Now, given it does vary by country, so where you ask this question will vary a lot. I know expats who live in certain countries and don't work with an attorney, and I know expats in another country that always work with an attorney. But it doesn't change that having access to one is always good. But here we find that so many day-to-day -day things are done by attorneys. It just makes life so much easier. We can't imagine trying to work without one. We use one for our residency, for every vehicle, every apartment, every、uh, business, every house. Whether it's a rental or it is a purchase, whether it's just overlooking deals. Now we also do business in the country, so that makes it that much more. But that is not required to need. You always need a lawyer, right? It's just a basic adulting thing. If you don't have one, consider how you're going to get one. In the short term, for sure. But having a lawyer means that when we have a question,、oh, can I legally buy a car? Can I legally hire someone to work in my house? If I do hire someone, how do I have to pay them? How do I have to structure that? What kind of bonuses do I have to do? What things do I need to be watching out for that I have no idea about? A common thing is Americans are used to paying on the month, twelve times a year. Or a solar month, as it actually is, and here in Latin America, it is standard to pay on the lunar month. That's every four weeks, so it's 13 pay periods in a year, not 12. And a simple thing like that, no one's going to tell you because to them, to to Latin Americans, that's just how it is. They aren't aware that you don't know, and it's not something they would remember suddenly. They just expect you to know because it's a cultural thing. And in some cases, like here in Nicaragua, it's enshrined in law, so you have to know. But as a foreigner who is hiring household help, you may get to the end of the year and not have paid their final month's salary, and fee you feel like you've paid everything. They say, "Where is my last paycheck?" You feel they're trying to take advantage of you. You, they feel like you're stealing from them. The government's going to side with them because you are legally mandated to pay 13 months. It's not on. Your employee that you, as the employer, didn't follow your employer due diligence. You're supposed to hire a lawyer for that. You can do it on your own. It's not a legal requirement to have a lawyer, but it is on you if you don't have the right information, if it's not current or correct. So a lawyer is super important, even for normal people doing normal things. It does not require being a business person or、uh, having some special、uh, events going on in your life or, or、um, you know, hiring personally or anything of the sort.、Uh, if you are living in a country, you want to at least be able to quickly ask questions and just check on things. And hey, I'm. I, I need to do a border run. Is there anything I need to know? Hey, I、uh, I'm looking to buy something. What do I need to know? Just there's who knows what questions you're going to need to ask and where you're going to ask them when there's something important. If it's not an attorney, if you're moving from North America, especially like the United States or Canada, then it is going to be normal to assume and hear when we say you need to have an attorney that this is a very expensive thing, hundreds of dollars per hour, large retainers, and you need to commit to a lot of time and maybe some recurring expense just to keep them. 
current, but with rare exception, any place you're moving to as an expat, of course, you could be moving to the United States, and then, of course, that would be true. But under normal circumstances, if you're moving somewhere in the world, especially if you're watching my channel and my guides, you are probably moving to a place that is a lot lower cost of living than the United States. Most of my audience are seriously looking at Latin America. Those who are not are often looking at Southeast Asia, perhaps, or uh, Eastern Africa. Those types of locations would be popular, maybe even Eastern Europe. In those locations, the expectation that a lawyer would be expensive would be unlikely. In nearly all of Latin America, you're going to find an attorney to be very affordable. And importantly, even if they're a little bit more expensive than you were hoping, chances are they are far less expensive than if you did not have an attorney. Like most good decisions in life, Making a good decision about your attorney, your accountant, your advisors in most spaces is to save you, or in some cases make you, money. Making is normally only if we're talking about a business advisor, if we're talking about a personal advisor, normally they're to save you money or to save you health or distress or something of that sort. But your health and distress can be equated into money at some point as well. So it still may be, right, happy, healthy, unstressed people, chances are they make more money and have more opportunities to save other places. So you want an attorney because they're going to protect you against things like monetary loss, whether it's uh, from getting scammed or not having a correct uh, contract or getting in trouble because your residency is wrong or you filled something out incorrectly or uh, you just ended up in a bad deal or didn't know something you needed to know before something bad happened. Maybe you pay a fine because your attorney didn't look something over. In all those cases, you assume that your attorney is not going to cost you as much as not having an attorney would likely cost you. In 100% of the cases, no, it's not going to be true. But in the majority of cases, I think it is. So don't think of this as an expensive thing because one, we don't assume you're going to be spending any money upfront or recurring. You're just creating a relationship and using an attorney whenever it is appropriate. Some examples of when you should essentially always use an attorney. And this absolutely would apply in places like the US, Canada, Western Europe, and so forth. And then, of course, extend that into any place you're looking to become an expat into. But your residency, that's basically always going to involve an attorney. There will be exceptions on that one. I'd still want an attorney to look it over just to give me some advice, even if it's very minor, very fast. Uh, some places like Mexico make it really easy to do the paperwork even before you get to the country. So that's a case where having an attorney in Mexico would be a little bit awkward and strange, but could still make sense. But here in Nicaragua, for example, you really can't apply. I'm not saying it's absolutely impossible, but the assumption and all of the processes are built around the idea that you will be in country, put in time, get to know an attorney, and then start filing your residency process. That's just how it's all designed. And most places, while they'll fall somewhere between Nicaragua and Mexico as literally two global extremes as to how easy it is to get residency before you come and the incredible lack of need to get any residency until you're already here. Most countries are just somewhere along that spectrum. I don't know any that gets as far on either end. Uh, but with all of those, having an attorney just to make it clear to you exactly what the current, and that's important, right? Even on my channel, we talk a lot about Nicaragua requirements, but keeping them absolutely current up to that day is all but impossible. Even if my video comes out today and it is accurate, it does not guarantee that it'll be correct for you tomorrow or the day after. Uh, and so that's where you always need an attorney who's able to keep up, uh, ask questions, double check, has the right resources, is an official attorney and has those uh, uh, access points to get into things to give you that information that you're going to need. Oh, is this residency going to work for me? What changes have been announced that may not be completely public? Obviously, they're public, but maybe not completely well known yet. Uh, what uh, is the anticipated changes? What have you seen over time? How do I best deal with this? What are my options? Are there options that the public doesn't know about? That's really common here. A lot of people are not aware of what are actually quite standard paths to residency and are often told by non-attorneys, you know, just other expats who are trying to, you know, do a little side job or whatever. And they'll tell them, oh, no, no, that residency doesn't exist. And your attorney will be like, that's the standard. Everyone does that. What are they talking about? And it's really easy to get misinformation when someone's not accountable for it. But under most circumstances, real lawyers are accountable for giving you correct and uh, accurate information. They may be on the hook for it. They may be uh, looking at a censure or losing their license or getting fined or 
carrying a liability for your mistakes if they give you wrong advice on an area that they are supposed to be your attorney on. So uh, there's a lot of protections in most circumstances when you use a real attorney beyond just getting advice you may not have access to otherwise. So don't think of them as an expense. Think of them as a cost savings and probably a relatively inexpensive one. Unless you're doing something complex, of course, if you have a complex case, you're, you're going to court, then the cost may be quite a bit uh, more. You may really feel that. But of course, again, losing a court lawsuit probably going to cost you more, right? Like there's just a lot of reasons why you want to be working with an attorney all of the time, not actively every day necessarily, but okay. So that was the example, residency, buying and often renting a house. I know in a lot of people rent without having an attorney and that's probably okay, but there's still a contract involved. You probably want it looked over. And again, how much is that going to cost versus what the risk is? Have an attorney who looks it over and they not only tell you if a contract is not in your favor or is onerous or whatever, they may also say, Hey, you know, this, doesn't give you the things that they mentioned. Are you sure this is right? Like you're getting an apartment without furniture. Didn't you say you were getting a furnished apartment? Oh yeah, this is the wrong contract. And once you sign it, you're in bad shape. So those are places that it's good to have them. Absolutely short-term rentals, doing it without an attorney, especially if it's like Airbnb, sure. But if I was getting into at least a year lease, I would always have an attorney, always, always. If I'm buying a house, the only thing you ever need is an attorney. I don't know any jurisdiction in the world where you need something other than an attorney, and I know of none where you don't need an attorney. They may not be required by law, but you absolutely need one as an adult trying to do an adult transaction. Never attempt to buy a house without an attorney. And always, when we say have an attorney, that always means your attorney, an attorney that answers to you and no one else. That means if you have a real estate agent who brings an attorney with them, that's not your attorney, that's their attorney. They can have one, that person's not bad, but they do not replace you having an attorney. You could be in a lawsuit. Yes, the person who's suing you has an attorney. They're not your attorney. Just like the real estate agent, they're adversarial with you. They make money by hurting you. So you know, in all those cases, their attorneys are not your friends, just as those people are not your friends. But you may have to do that kind of business. That's fine. Have an attorney of your own. Uh, if you are buying a car, yes, I know in the United States you would buy a car without an attorney, but if you're an immigrant buying a car or an expat buying a car in the United States, uh, typically expats are not buying cars, but they could be in the US, then you definitely want an attorney. Just look things over. Could be real fast, really simple. It does not mean they're doing all the work. It doesn't mean you're not doing the haggling, but in some cases it may be that you're worried about dealing with the whole thing with a car send your attorney to buy the car. Here in Nicaragua, that would be a very sensible thing to do. You may get a much better deal, plus a lot of protections. An attorney can do a lot of things for you, or maybe the attorney's office at the oversight of an attorney. So property, even rentals, cars, residency, those are three super important areas that essentially everyone does when they're looking at being an expat, uh, or especially if they're looking at being an immigrant, right? Getting residency that is temporary, you're still an expat. Getting residency that's permanent, you are probably turning into an immigrant. So I started my journey as an expat. I have now matured out of pure expat, which is the parent category. I'm now an immigrant, which is a specific category of expat that is permanent in their new country. So that's why we use those terms differently. They mean two different things. One is a subset of the other. They're very discrete meanings. Uh, so with this, what I want your takeaway to be is don't fear getting an attorney. Don't avoid getting an attorney. Don't delay on getting an attorney. Make sure you can have an attorney from the beginning because anything you do, and this is if you're just an expat, if you're looking to invest anything of that nature, you absolutely need an attorney at every turn. So much more than just setting up your business or finding out how you can invest and dealing with international finance. Typically, like me, you're going to have an attorney in the country you live in and the country that you came from. You're going to want people who know what the requirements are, what your limitations are, what your, your duties are, uh, so you don't get those things wrong because Sometimes these things get complex, but rarely are they expensive uh, if you're doing it correctly. So that's a big piece of advice, something that I've definitely learned having been an expat firsthand. My attorneys have made my journey possible. I cannot imagine having gone through buying a home, renting a home, buying a vehicle, uh, getting my residency processed, 
and in my case, investing in businesses as well without having an attorney along with so many other aspects of my expat life. It, my attorney has helped me in locating a car, locating a home, uh, dealing with paying bills, dealing with understanding how to get my internet hooked up, how to get the right carriers. Sure, I could have asked around. Those are the kinds of things I don't need an attorney for. But if I didn't have an attorney, I wouldn't know where to go as a new expat. Now, after many years and being a full immigrant in the country that I live in, I don't need my attorney for those types of things, but I still need my attorney all the time. I have so many questions, so many things that I want guidance on. Is this a good deal? Is this a good idea? Is this safe? Is this... There's so many things I just don't know. And so having that resource is super critical for me into keeping me from making just really bad decisions or missing out on things that I didn't know uh, were required or were possible. That's a big one. Often your attorney is simply gonna be knowledgeable about what options may exist for you. Why would you want to give those up? But my journey, I can't imagine having made it without my attorney and seeing other expats, those that are successful, universally have good attorneys that they trust, have a good relationship with, and they lean on them. Uh, and, and they make great customers because they need lots of pretty simple things all the time. They make a good, solid customer for an attorney. Uh, and people that we see dramatically failing often, this may not be the cause of their failure, but it is tied to not having access to an attorney when they need it. One of the most famous failures that happened here in Nicaragua recently was very heavily uh, triggered by the fact that the person had a, a very simple happenstance, nothing specifically major. I mean, it was kind of major, but not so major that you would generally think of it in that way. They didn't have an attorney at the time that a minor emergency came up and that triggered a ripple effect of not being able to get trusted resources. And they got into so much danger and lost so much money because they never were able to identify and and create a relationship with a trusted attorney. And they had lived here, for, he happened to be here for a long time, and they had not done the thing that we were saying to do. They didn't get to the country and get an attorney first thing or nearly first thing. It doesn't have to be first day. It isn't your absolute number one uh, uh, priority. If you're starting a business and the business is getting kicked off, yeah, an attorney before day one, every time. The rule for business is the first three people you have before you open the business, before you incorporate the business. You have your attorney, your accountant, and your IT professional, plus whoever's doing operations probably. But those three people, always. Other people, there's almost always someone else you need, but those people change depending on the business. But your attorney, your accountant, and your CIO, your head of IT, the person who is giving you the infrastructure of your business, they have to be involved at the point of or before the creation of the business or you are putting yourself on the back step from the very beginning and potentially in huge, huge risk. And there's not one of those three that you can say, well, that one I could, no, all three, it would be insane to start a business without all three part of your advisory team to that first decision. Where am I going to incorporate? How will I incorporate? How do we file, right? You need them at that point and every point after that in at least tiny decisions. So that that's different. But if we're talking about just as an expat, a personal, even if you're just a retiree moving to a new country, yeah, you can do without an attorney on your first day. Normally, there are situations where you need them even before you arrive. But in most places, you just need to make it a pretty high priority to start the process of looking for one pretty early on because it might take you time before you find one you like, one that you can afford, one that does the things that you need that will be on call, that's happy working with you and so forth. You want time to establish that relationship because that will be important when you need them. You need to know you can trust them. And in the case of the example, and we've done big deep dives into this, but in that example, they had been through buying a house, buying a car, uh, getting residency. And in all those cases, they had not developed a relationship with an attorney. So not only did they not use an attorney for those things and probably put themselves at very high risk because of those things, who knows if their residency was done correctly. I've heard horror stories of people who've had them forged and they don't actually know that their residency is invalid. Uh, they don't know if they overpaid for their house. So when they had to sell it in a panic, were they not in a good position to sell it because they had paid two, and this is literal, two or three times as much as its value when they bought it because they didn't have an attorney but did have someone else handling paperwork for them? Um, did they, you know, buying a car, they probably didn't get ripped off, but what risk were they at? 
But importantly, those were three major life checkpoints that all gave them moments to have needed an attorney, should have gotten one, and should have used that opportunity to evaluate them and to create a relationship or move on and find another person with whom to create a relationship. And they didn't use those opportunities. So when something actually an emergency arose, they were not prepared in the least, even having lots of time in the country, even having had lots of opportunities that in theory should have forced them to have already established a relationship with an attorney. They managed to avoid it to a point that when something really major and bad happened in their lives, they were utterly unprepared and utterly unable to, to filter out people looking to take advantage of them from actual attorneys because under that strain and stress and duress, they felt extorted and taken advantage of, but didn't know where to turn, didn't know how to turn to anyone. And because there was their personal fortunes on the line, everyone around them, including all the expats around them, used the opportunity to take advantage of them. Everyone saw dollar signs in their eyes and everyone tried to cash it in. And so you don't want to be, it may feel like you have plenty of time. It may feel like you have all these people around you. Surely someone will help you. How will you know who is trying to help you at a moment when so many people are likely to be trying to take advantage of you. That's an extreme circumstance. But when those things arise in your life, you don't want to be asking around, ooh, something terrible's happened. I have no flexibility, no money, no time. I need to get an attorney today. Who has one I can trust? That is not the time that you're going to have to trust blindly when maybe your fortune, maybe your freedom, maybe your, your life is on the line. You want at that point to go, talk to my attorney. We have a relationship. They already have everything they need to get payment, everything they need to act on my behalf, everything that they need to contact my extended family or whatever. Those are critical things that you don't want to have to worry about at the time that there's an emergency. And heaven forbid that you have to have that emergency. Hopefully you only need your attorney for good, solid things. You're buying a new house, you're getting a car, you want to get residency, maybe you want to get citizenship. Great. Use that attorney for those things. Wonderful. And just have that peace of mind, much like health insurance. This is legal insurance and it's really cheap to have just someone on call. You know the hospital down the street, they're gonna take you. You already established where you wanna go. You get a general practitioner that has your records on file. You have all this stuff to make your healthcare easier. Do the same thing with your legal. As an expat, you have so many fewer natural resources. Over time, you will probably replace them. In five or 10 years living in your new country, you will probably be able to approximate the knowledge and experience that you had in your original country. You'll never be the same, but you'll probably get pretty close after an amount of time and dealing with things as an adult. But during that time of getting to that point, and in some cases, even after that point, you are going to benefit heavily, if nothing else, with the peace of mind of knowing if something goes wrong, if you have a question, you don't have a, where do I turn? Because literally an attorney if you're paying them by the hour, is going to be thrilled if you say, look, I got to pay you for 30 minutes. I need to know where to go to buy mayonnaise that's not in my local store. They will take the time out of their day to advise you on really silly things on which they are not experts because they have the knowledge you need. They're a person you trust. It's a relationship you have. If that's the only relationship you have, you don't have any neighbors you can talk to, no friends you can talk to, no expat groups you can talk to, you're, you're hesitant about posting on my, my threads, fine. Your attorney will be that person you can turn to for nearly everything. Yes, you have to pay if you get to that point. But if you get to that point, you need to pay somebody to help you. That's the person. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller comes directly to me and helps fund everything we do from cameras to uh, software and all that. We also now have a membership program. Should you be so inclined to want to support us monthly, that would be so amazing. Uh, you can see the join button on most systems right down there. Uh, just click on that. It's $4.99 a month. And uh, it really just is a way to monthly give a small amount and help make the work that we do here possible. We'll have more of these expat guide components coming out uh, regularly and uh, get down. And of course, ask your questions, leave, leave your comments. Uh, we want to be here to help. We are not selling anything. There's no program to pay for. There's no additional anything. If you want one-on-one -on -one time on a call, that's a different thing, but there's no service. We don't have a program for uh, anything. All of our information is free. 
please use it, ask questions, get involved in the community. We want you to be successful because it's an important life journey and no one should have to pay for such important uh, life advice. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I'll see all of you tomorrow.